An adventure's no fun if it's too easy. To celebrate the 20th anniversary of Sonic the Hedgehog, Sonic Team released Sonic Generations to the world during the holiday season of 2011. After learning what not to do with Sonic 06 and slowly getting their groove back with Sonic Unleashed and Sonic Colors, Generations seemed to be just what the franchise needed to regain relevance during the seventh generation of video game consoles. In addition to the 3D boost gameplay, which had been generally well received by critics, Sonic Team also also added some traditional 2D gameplay to the mix, along with a familiar face, paying homage to the gameplay style that put Sonic at the forefront of popular culture 20 years prior. Of course, as the years have passed, the fanbase has become more divided on this ceremonial outing. Some declare it the high point in the series, with polished gameplay, excellent level design, and devoid of gimmicks like werehogs, princesses, hub worlds, and guns. Others have found the game overpraised, citing the shallow plot, disappointing voice acting, sparse 3D gameplay, and boost to win mechanics falling short of the adventure glory years. So, is Sonic Generation Sonic at his best? or is Generations all style and no substance? Let's take a look. Sonic Generations opens with a round, black-eyed Sonic taking a stroll through Green Hill Zone when a loud rumble stops him in his tracks. The rumble is coming from a menacing-looking villain called the Time Eater. Then the scene flips to a gathering of Sonic All-Stars getting ready for a surprise birthday party for a slender, green-eyed Sonic. Like before, the mysterious Time Eater rumbles into view and crashes the party, sucking in all of the characters. Sonic goes in for an attack, but is rebuked and presumably knocked out. Sonic then awakens to a mysterious world lacking color. After a meeting of the minds, the team discovers they are traveling through time and space and are trapped in a mysterious void. The only way to escape is to defeat the Time Eater so everyone can return to their proper places. It's not a terribly deep plot, but does an okay-ish job putting the classic and modern characters in the same place so 20 years of Sonic's history can be celebrated. This theme of celebration is carried throughout Sonic Generations, with the player racing through almost 20 years of Sonic history. Rather than new level themes, Sonic Team split the nine zones into three distinct groupings, Classic, Dreamcast, and Modern. Each zone is then taken from a different game from the era. So, the Classic Era features Green Hill Zone, Chemical Plant Zone, and Sky Sanctuary Zone. The Dreamcast Era features Speed Highway, City Escape, and Seaside Hill. And finally, the Modern Era features Crisis City, Rooftop Run, and finally, Planet Wisp. Generations does a nice job with the game's structure as well. Each era is unlocked sequentially, so to unlock the next third of the game, a player will need to beat both acts of each zone, complete three mission stages to unlock three boss gate keys, defeat said boss, and then move on to the next area. Nothing here is complicated. Navigating to different acts and missions is easy, and overall, the hub offers a nice compromise between large hub worlds and basic map screens. But let's move on to the real meat of the game, the gameplay. As everyone watching knows, Act 1 of each zone is a romp with classic Sonic, and Act 2 is with modern Sonic. However, this is slightly misleading. Classic Sonic does not control like the Genesis titles, and modern Sonic uses the gameplay from Unleashed in Colors. This means true Genesis-styled gameplay and adventure-styled gameplay is not found anywhere in the game. At its core, Sonic Generations is most definitely a boost game. For for better or worse. Being a boost game, Modern Sonic returns with a stomp, homing attack, air boost, slide, quick step, drift, wall jump, light speed dash, and the trademark boost, with the boost meter being again filled by rings. The gameplay in these acts switches between behind Sonic 3D sections and side view 2D sections, matching the first two titles in the Boost trilogy. It's also worth noting the developers utilized all four face buttons for this adventure. This means no more homing attacks when attempting to double jump, or boosting when attempting to homing attack. It's a minor change for sure, but makes for a more comfortable experience. Classic Sonic's moveset is significantly more limited. Sonic can duck, 
and Spin Dash. That's it. And this is both the main appeal of Sonic Generations as well as its biggest handicap, and a trap Sonic Team never figured out how to escape since Sonic's original 3D debut in 1998. Like the 3D games before it, by offering multiple gameplay types, Sonic Team is effectively reducing the appeal their games can have. If one doesn't like one of the elements presented, then gamers are forced to play through stages they might not enjoy. In the case of Sonic Generations, I accept the fact there are Sonic fans who aren't into the 2D gameplay, and for fans of the adventure series, the boost gameplay is significantly different and might not scratch that 3D Sonic itch they might have. In fact, it's hard to play through Sonic Generations and not think about all of the changes the series has been through. The classic levels are an awesome blast of nostalgia when platformers ruled the world with clever gimmicks and simple level geometry. The dream Dreamcast era levels remind me of Sega's final days as a hardware company, with their scrappy development teams needing to pour their heart and soul into games to keep Sega afloat. For Sonic Adventure 1 and 2, a lot of effort was put into storytelling. Sonic Team spent time scouting the world and pulled a lot of different ancient theologies and myths into epic battles with Eggman. And none of that storytelling makes its way into Sonic Generations. The plot is bare bones, there is little conflict, there is no character growth, a sense of hopelessness never overcomes the characters. Sonic Generations barely follows the 3 x structure of storytelling, if at all. But I'm not here to judge Sonic Generations for what it is not. The 2D gameplay does not match the Genesis titles, the 3D gameplay does not match the adventure games, but my preference for what a Sonic Sonic game is or is not really doesn't matter. Instead, I will judge Sonic Generations on its own merits, rather than my personal expectations. And with that, Green Hill Zone. Both acts of Green Hill Zone do a wonderful job getting players acquainted with the controls and general flow of the game. In Act 1, the player will learn to navigate the 2D landscape with an exceptionally limited moveset and new jumping physics. Gone is the weird jump arc from Sonic Colors, and in its place something far more natural. Landing on small platforms is easy, as is bouncing off enemies, which offer a nice vertical lift, leading to new areas. In Act 2, the player will learn the general flow of the 3D gameplay style. This includes boosting during long narrow sections, boosting up ramps to reach new areas of the level, and homing attacking enemies and into springs. It's all pretty straightforward stuff and should be quick and painless for newcomers and veterans alike. From here on out, Sonic Generation slowly introduces new mechanics to the player. For classic Sonic, this comes mostly in the form of new obstacles like moving and rotating platforms, water, and the frequency of spike hazards or bottomless pits. For modern Sonic, this includes all of those fancy moves. The quick step gradually becomes more necessary, from dodging bombs in chemical plant zone to smashing into enemies in rooftop run. The stomp begins as an easy way to halt momentum, but is later required to push lava down. The time and pacing of new concepts are great, never overwhelming the player with too many skills, but frequent enough to keep players challenged and engaged. Planet Wisp does deserve a special shoutout, however. Two of the Wisp powers from Sonic Colors return. For Classic Sonic, this is the Spike Wisp. This allows Classic Sonic to climb up walls as well as trigger certain switches, opening up new areas of the level. Modern Sonic gets the Rocket Wisp, allowing Sonic to smash through designated blocks, again allowing forward progression. Graphically, Sonic Generations is a gorgeous game, both technically and artistically. Granted, Sonic Team did basically get to cherry pick their best work from the two decades prior, so it really should be no surprise. Green Hill Zone matches the Genesis aesthetic with checkerboard patterns and lush greenery, but rather than everything being geometrically perfect, there is a certain Dr. Seuss or Tim Burton flair to the geometry, making the areas far more visually interesting than they have ever been. Chemical Plant is another stunner, and the background detail is outstanding, with intricate structures giving multiple layers of depth, harkening back to the parallax scrolling of yesteryear. I also really dig the cool refraction effects when Sonic is traveling through tubes. The attention to detail is terrific. Sky Sanctuary really shows off Sega's grasp of the 7th generation hardware. I love how vast areas of the level are visible in the background, and it's cool to know the player will eventually be in those areas. But for now, they are out of focus and in the background. 
While Sonic Generations does have some pop-up, it's pretty minimal, and scenes like this are just breathtaking. There is something inherently cool about seeing old stages reimagined in 3D, but that doesn't mean the Dreamcast era stages don't offer plenty of wow. Speed Highway demonstrates a massive leap forward in terms of graphical complexity. Again, the backgrounds are deep, with many levels of skyscrapers poking around in the background, along with the highway intersecting with the game path. And I really dig how the ground is actually rendered. Finally, it doesn't feel like Sonic is just bouncing along platforms hovering in space, but actually interacting with a living, breathing city. City Escape is actually pretty similar to the Dreamcast version, complete with urban boarding and a truck chase. Seaside Hill really shows just how far water effects had come since 2004. I mean, the water looked nice in Sonic Heroes, but in Generations, it's amazing. Even the modern era offers a nice upgrade. While Sonic 06 was a nice looking game, especially with its ultra smooth frame rate, it was definitely light on effects. In Sonic Generations, it's elevated to the next level. Particle effects are aplenty with glowing ash floating throughout the stage, and the heat waves looking especially convincing. Rooftop Run, on the other hand, just might be the only level not visually improved over its predecessor. That isn't a problem, of course, as Unleash still looks remarkable even today. Last but not least, Planet Wisp looks terrific thanks to the hardware boost from the Wii to the Xbox 360. The grass, trees, and shrubbery all look far more dense and visually appealing. And something consistent throughout the entire game is a smooth frame rate, rarely dipping from 30 frames per second on the Xbox 360 version, despite the abundance of realistic shadows, motion blur, depth of field effects, and destructible elements. About the only effect missing are some of the awesome reflection effects found in Unleashed, which gave bricks depth as well as reflectiveness. As far as I can tell in Generations, everything is a little flatter and less shiny. Artistically, however, Generations is beautiful. The artists did an excellent job blending a cartoon aesthetic with real-world touches, allowing the levels to flex their creative muscle with true fantasy locales, but somewhat grounded in reality, like one could actually visit these places and they would make sense. Now, one might say there are too many city themes, but I would say this is a nitpick. There is a world of difference between City Escape and Rooftop Run, one resembling San Francisco and the other being Vintage Europe. Same goes for the Speed Highway in Crisis City. Speed Highway is alive with neon lights and traffic, while Crisis City is on fire and mostly dead. In fact, Sonic Generations is just as visually diverse as the Sonic games before it. Primaries are again vibrant with plenty of reds, greens, and blues, and each has accents contrasting nicely, creating a game which is easy on the eyes. It's not just the colors either. The artists did a great job incorporating lots of patterns into the levels as well. The vast color palette, great mix of organic and mechanical level structures, wonderful lighting effects mimicking various times of day, help to make each of the nine zones feel completely different from each other, yet none feel disconnected either. The terrific visual presentation is matched by an equally amazing audio presentation. Thankfully, while the Sonic franchise has had its ups and downs, the one constant was amazing music, so this should be no surprise. Now, I am not one to purchase video game soundtracks and listen to them outside of the game, so I am sure there are things I am missing. In any case, Act 1 and Act 2 of each stage features different versions of the classic music. Sometimes these are dramatically different, with new arrangements and all new instruments. Sometimes these are more similar to the source, or maybe even the same. But like always, they are all brilliant. The Genesis era music is surprisingly good, considering the source material is based on the old Mega Drive FM chip. However, it's the super catchy melodies that have remained timeless. Speed Highway sounds absolutely amazing, with a techno dance groove and a heavy bass line. The remix City Escape even sounds great, despite being auto-tuned and the genre changing from rock to dance. It's not as good as the original, but the catchy lyrics and new beat are a nice twist on the classic. Crisis City loses the violins and replaces them with electric guitar, yet the haunting notes deliver a similar impact. The wonderful sound effects also return. Sonic sounds like a jet engine taking off when he enters boost mode, and the music starts to fade in the background as he breaks the sound barrier. Music gets muffled the deeper Sonic gets underwater, giving a sense of being in danger. All the classic sound effects return as well, 
including the appropriate jumping sounds, spin dash revving, and the perfect smash when defeating an enemy. There's really nothing to complain about. Like the visuals, Sonic Generation's sound design is a cut above most games of the time. The vast array of genres, wide instrument selection, and catchy melodies still sound every bit as fresh in 2018 as they did in their respective years. So, with all of that out of the way, we arrive back to the question asked at the beginning of the video. Is Sonic Generations Sonic at his best, or is this one all style and no substance? Arguably, the two most important aspects of any platformer are the controls and the levels. And in both of these regards, Generations absolutely delivers. First, this just might be the best Sonic has ever controlled in 3D up to this point. I don't think I've ever had such an easy time maneuvering through 3D space and landing on small platforms is a breeze. I was able to quickly and confidently jump from platform to platform without having to stop and get my bearings. Sonic at a modest speed handles beautifully, changing direction smoothly without feeling slippery. He isn't as floaty in midair either, making the overall experience feel tight and responsive. The other trademark Sonic moves work perfectly as well. Going from a run to a jump to a homing attack feels smooth and natural and makes the game flow exceptionally well while navigating in 3D. The quick step has returned to the shoulder buttons rather than the D-pad, meaning it's easy to maintain speed and step at the same time. Even the trick system has been further tweaked. Gone are the quick time events from Unleashed and the button mashing from Colors, and in its place something more akin to an extreme sports game. Granted, wiggling the analog stick back and forth and then pressing the shoulder button still isn't exactly riveting, but it does feel like a nice compromise. I I will say I still find the light speed dash to be very finicky, but whatever, it's rarely necessary so I'm going to let it slide. The 2D gameplay is also excellent. The strange jump arc from colors has been replaced with something significantly smoother and more predictable. While not as tight as, say, the Genesis games, the momentum has been tweaked and I found I could land on small platforms with far more confidence than the previous boost titles. But more impressive than the controls is how perfectly they work within the levels. The daytime levels in Unleashed and most of the levels in Sonic Colors were extremely basic. Sonic Generations levels are anything but. Each and every act of each and every zone feels methodically designed. Every platform, every ramp, every ring, every enemy, every spike feels perfectly placed, like somebody was actually putting thought into the placement of every item and obstacle, rather than just scattering them around haphazardly. This means attentive players will rarely be making blind jumps, running into enemies, or getting surprised by spikes. This goes for both the 2D and the 3D levels. When I would get hit by an enemy or fall to my death, it was always my fault for being impatient or not paying attention, and not misleading design. Even better, shortcuts in Sonic Generations are more difficult routes rather than alternate routes. In order to shave off a few seconds in Speed Highway, for example, one needs to time this jump just right in addition to boosting in order to skip the first part of the level. This isn't just an alternate path for the sake of an alternate path. Skill is rewarded with a faster time to the finish. The tight controls and fantastic levels make for an experience one will want to replay over and over, and I actually felt compelled to get an S rank and find the five red star rings on all 18 acts twice. And this is where the superb level design really begins to shine. My biggest gripe with Sonic Colors was the lack of challenge. Levels were overly simplistic, making repeat playthroughs less and less enjoyable. In Generations, the game gets better and better with each playthrough thanks to two secondary goals. The first goal is obtaining an S rank. This is achieved by racing through the levels with quick times, with rings collected also giving a slight boost in rankings. However, the best a player can achieve through rings and 
time alone is an A rank. To get an S rank, the player must have a clean run without dying, which will push an A rank to an S rank. This gives incentive to exploring alternate routes, which are generally more challenging. The risk of taking more challenging paths is rewarded with faster clear times. The second goal is locating the five red star rings hidden in each act. It is here where mastery of generations controls will really come into play. Now, not all red star rings are created equal. Some are very easy to spot and grab. Others will require some exploring, either by jumping through different rings to be launched into different areas or just noticing different pathways. Others will require a little bit of grinding, which I don't particularly like. Sky Sanctuary Zone Act 1, for example, requires a full three playthroughs to collect all of the rings, for example, which seems a little silly. However, some red star rings are located in hard to reach places. Some might just need a well-timed jump, others a well-timed boost, but where Generations shines is when a number of well-executed moves are required to reach a ring. This could be homing into a zip line at just the right moment, followed by a tricky jump over a pit. The final rings on Planet Wisp require the player to execute a number of perfectly timed jumps in order to reach a power-up necessary to snatch the final prize. Fail at any point and the player will need to restart the level and try again. More is required from the player than simply noticing a red star ring. A player will need to use their platforming skills along with the reflexes and dexterity to be successful. And in this regard, Sonic Generations achieves something pretty great. It manages to be a modern Sonic game that dishes out a legitimately good challenge that is both free of frustration, fair, and extremely engaging, all at the same time. However, Generations is not without its faults. First and foremost, there are those pesky mission stages. At minimum, a player will need to complete nine of these, one for each act to earn the boss keys needed to gain entry into the boss gates. The quality level of these is all over the map. The doppelganger races are probably my favorite. The goal is to beat the opposing Sonic to the finish line. While racing, I was familiarizing myself with the level layouts or using already obtained knowledge to defeat my opponent. However, repeating the same stage a second time does feel like padding. Sometimes levels do change layouts, like the Power Stomp Challenge for example, tasking the player with smashing through crates. However, this has the opposite problem of the doppelganger race. It just isn't very interesting. The specific the specific skill set here isn't really required in the main game, and there is little challenge to the ordeal. But again, it feels like padding. And that is my main issue with the missions. The quality is all over the map. Missions are often repeated, and they feel tacked on for the sake of lengthening the game. It's nowhere near as offensive as, say, playing through the game four times, but the inclusion feels out of place. Thankfully, beating these will unlock new music tracks in the music room, which is nice. Unlocked music can also be played during stages, which is another terrific bonus, so it is not a complete time waster. In fact, the game is constantly throwing rewards at the player. Each red star ring collected will reward the player with new artwork or new moves. Yeah, Sonic Generations allows the player to tweak the actual gameplay. These can be sometimes major, too, like having the boost gauge fill up when defeating enemies or increasing the acceleration, which drastically alters Sonic's mid-air controls. These are each assigned a point value as well, with the player being able to equip 100 points, so it's not too crazy, but I do appreciate the fact how little actions result in little rewards, rather than nothing. Another fault with Sonic Generations is the camera. First, the player has no control over it, which isn't necessarily the problem. It's very dynamic, zooming in and out, always pointing the player forward. Honestly, during normal gameplay, it's rarely problematic, and the lack of manual control is not an issue. However, the lack of control does make backtracking a pain. On at least one occasion, I needed to travel backwards to retry an obstacle. I knew there were some dash paths between Sonic and the springs, but there was no real way to see them. While backtracking isn't a normal part of the gameplay, when going for secondary goals, it can be, and I would have appreciated some sort of control. 
There was also a couple of times when it was zoomed in too close in the classic sections, making it difficult to see upcoming enemies. Again, this doesn't happen often, but the camera isn't always perfect. My last issue is with the bosses. There are six main bosses in all, and these are divided into two groups. The first type are character battles against Sonic's previous rivals. This includes Metal Sonic, Silver the Hedgehog, and fan favorite, Shadow the Hedgehog. Against Metal Sonic, the player needs to dodge attacks and and strike when Metal Sonic gets winded. The Silver the Hedgehog battle is easily the best. The player needs to dodge Silver's telekinesis attacks and then homing attack to do damage. Curiously, this is vastly superior than anything found in Sonic 06. Lastly, the Shadow battle is okay. The player needs to race to some purple orbs, then smash into asteroids, and then finally run into Shadow or something. The next three bosses are all against familiar foes. In the first fight, Sonic revisits Death Egg Row Robot. After smashing into it a few times, the action changes. The player needs to press a switch to reveal a bomb and then lure Eggman into punching the bomb. If successful, the player can then attack the doctor. Next is Perfect Chaos. This one is very similar to the Dreamcast encounter, only the player boosts towards Chaos rather than flying towards him with Supersonic. Nothing here is very difficult thanks to the excellent jumping and responsive controls. Finally, there is Egg Dragoon. This is the sloppiest fight in the game as it tries to incorporate the most of Sonic's skill set. This includes rail grinding, wall jumping, and of course, boosting. The first few attempts are strange, but after understanding when one can actually strike, it goes a bit faster. Still, this one ranks up there with some of Sonic Team's other lesser creations. Beating these six bosses will net the player six of the seven Chaos Emeralds. The seventh Chaos Emerald is a freebie presented during a cutscene, oddly enough. With all seven Chaos Emeralds collected, the player can place each in a gear in the final area of the hub world. Placing all seven will kick off the final plot sequences as well as the final boss fight. It turns out Eggman and past Eggman are behind the time eater. After a quick smackdown, the All-Stars cheer the two Sonics on to continue the fight. From here, they go super and the final boss fight kicks off. The boss fight itself is terrible. Sonic and Sonic go super and then have to crash into Eggman's time eater before the rings run out. But much like the fight in Sonic Adventure 2, Sonic Heroes, Sonic 06, and Sonic Unleashed the fight is clumsy. The idea is to switch between the two Sonics in real time, allowing the player to snatch rings and dodge attacks with the ideal perspective. Unfortunately, everything moves exceptionally slow. Eggman seems to dodge away, and striking the foe feels more like a game of chance than a game of skill. It's a rather anticlimactic way to end the adventure. With the Time Eater defeated, everyone lands back at the birthday celebration from the game's opening. The Sonics and Tails say goodbye, and the classic characters return to their proper time. Then, of course, the credits roll. As an anniversary game celebrating 20 years of Sonic the Hedgehog, Sonic Generations does fail in a few regards. First, the story feels shoehorned in like a marketing ploy to create buzz, not a well thought out plot written with care. The biggest problem is the Time Eater never really poses a threat to Sonic. Other than the All-Stars being freed from the statue-like state, there is little other conflict in the world. There are no woodland creatures or alien life forms being harnessed and abused by the villain. In fact, the world is pretty awesome and Sonic even has a sweet room to chill out in. Without any true conflict to resolve, the Time Eater villain never feels threatening, making the second and third acts of the story feel pretty empty. Honestly, Sonic Team could have scrapped the story entirely and the game would be no worse for wear. Or of course, fleshing it out and adding some real conflict needing to be resolved would have been nice as well. Lastly, it is inherently odd to play as the same character with two completely different movesets. Much like in Sonic Unleashed or Sonic Adventure 2, there is something jarring about having having moves yanked away from the player and then replaced with other skills. Sure, one can get used to it, but it's still extremely odd to go from boosting and homing attacking to spin dashing and then back again. But other than the inherent problems with multiple play styles, a lackluster story, and some quality control problems with missions and bosses, most of Sonic Generations is a positive experience from beginning to end. The game is relatively free of glitches, for example. During the normal course of gameplay, 
way, I only found one spring that would launch Sonic into danger instead of forward, and there was also an extra life monitor that could be destroyed through the wall. Other than these two instances, I could not find any programming issues. Sonic Generations feels remarkably polished, despite being released just a single year after Sonic Colors. Speaking of polished, Sonic Generations absolutely nails the core platforming mechanics. The moveset is vast, and every button on the Xbox 360 controller is utilized in some way, even the triggers and bumpers, but they are introduced at a perfect pace, allowing newcomers to come to grips with it all, but allowing veterans to take advantage of them right away. This learning curve is carried over into the difficulty. Green Hill Zone is a cakewalk for both modern and classic Sonic. Planet Wisp, on the other hand, offers a decent challenge with plenty of bottomless pits, a plethora of spikes, moving platforms requiring perfect timing, and many many enemies needing to be dispatched or avoided, but nothing is ever overwhelming or unfair. Sky Sanctuary is relatively friendly when it comes to missing jumps, but Crisis City is most definitely not. Seaside Hill has a ton of jumping over bottomless pits, boosting over water and giant boulders ready to crush our hero. The acts offer a nice balance by never holding the player's hand, but never leaving them in the dark either. The level design is also interesting with tons of new mechanics or unique moments. The gun chase sequence in City Escape returns, but now it has saws and takes advantage of the quick step. In the classic act, it's even better, smashing through destructible level pieces forcing the player to move quickly, and I love how the scaffolding here is slowly destroyed as the truck moves back and forth, adding a timing element for the player to contend with. In Rooftop Run, the player needs to get to the center of the clock, and then Spin Dash, which causes the face to swing open, destroying one of Eggman's airships. I also really dig how elements are improved upon, rather than simply copied. Seaside Hill is a great example of this. The buggy segments include random ramps to jump on and bombs to avoid. The classic act also includes an underwater segment. City Escape includes skateboarding, complete with ramps leading to red star rings. Crisis City adds a wind hazard and the Spike Wisp adds a puzzle element on Planet Wisp, forcing the player to move along gears to trigger switches. And perhaps best of all, the enemy placement found in Sonic Generations is among the best the series has ever seen. In the modern levels, they are expertly placed to aid in platforming or are used to access shortcuts. The homing attack is also perfect in this game, always locking onto the most logical target and never faltering. The enemy placement is even stronger in the classic acts. Rather than being placed in random gotcha locations, they are expertly placed as part of a timing obstacle or, more impressively, used to reach new areas. The way Sonic bounces from enemy to enemy feels amazing and is something that just might surpass the classic series. There are even moments where they work perfectly in conjunction with the spin dash to hop across obstacles in short order. It's seriously good. And I also must give a shout out to the warning signs over pits. While I never personally found the Sonic franchise to feature misleading jumps into the abyss, I do find it charming death pits are marked with a sign, alleviating any questions as to what lies below. It's this attention to detail I just can't get enough of. So yeah, Sonic Generations is a great game and definitely marks the high point of Sonic's 3D adventures. While not perfect, the level design, controls, difficulty curve, and replayability are spot on, offering a game that is easy to pick up and play, but also offers enough challenge and depth to prevent the game from feeling stale and repetitive. It's also relatively free of glitches, and the padding is kept to a minimum. When recommending Sonic Generations, I don't have to make any qualifiers about this being a Sonic game. There are no confusing hub worlds, no quality dips with alternate gameplay styles, no cringy story elements, and no slippery controls. In short, Sonic Generations is an exceptionally well-crafted adventure that not just Sonic fans can appreciate, but a game everyone can appreciate.